All right, welcome back. Today, we're diving deep into a really fascinating investment thesis. It's one that tries to draw a straight line from one of the biggest upgrades in Ethereum's entire history directly to the stock price of one single company. Yeah, it's a bold claim, and they've got some very, very specific numbers to back it up. And this, right here, is the central question, isn't it? The whole thesis hinges on this idea. Could one technical change, one single hard fork, really be the spark that ignites a massive 350% rally in a company's stock? It's a wild thought, but it suggests that maybe, just maybe, understanding the deep tech here could be the key to unlocking a major financial play. So let's break down exactly how this argument is put together, step by step. Okay, so let's get into the timeline. As you can see, this whole thing is built on a pretty tight schedule. It all kicks off with the Fusca upgrade going live on December 3rd, 2025. Right after that, in early January, there's a technical ramp up. Then comes the real kicker in the first quarter of 2026, a key corporate strategy launch, and the grand finale, a final price target date set for the middle of that year. So here's our roadmap for today. We're gonna tackle this in six parts. First, we'll look at the upgrade itself. Then we'll explore how it's supposed to pump up Ethereum's price. After that, we zoom in on the company in the spotlight, BMER. Check out its pretty unique strategy, see who the big money players are, and finally, put all the pieces together for the big price prediction. Okay, first things first. Let's start with the engine driving this entire theory, the Fusaka hard fork. Now, this isn't just some minor update. The source material paints this as a fundamental game changer for how the entire Ethereum network actually works. So what's the magic behind it? Well, the core tech is something called PeerDAS. Now forget the complicated name for a second. Think of it like this. Imagine you had to prove a massive thousand page book was authentic. Before, every single validator had to download and read the entire thing. A huge pain, right? With PeerDAS, they only need to check a few random sentences to know the whole book is correct. It makes the whole process exponentially faster and way, way cheaper. And here, you can see the real-world impact of that new tech. It's pretty staggering. The network's data capacity is projected to explode, going up by eight times. But here's what really matters for you, the user. That's expected to cause transaction fees on Layer 2 networks to absolutely plummet. We're talking an 87% drop, from around 50 cents down to just 6 cents. That's a huge deal. So when things get that much cheaper, what happens? Well, the thesis argues that activity is going to explode. You're looking at a projection where the total value locked up in these Layer 2 networks could quintuple, jumping from about $39 billion today all the way to $200 billion. It's a massive expansion, all built on that foundation of lower fees. Okay, so that's the tech side of things. The network gets way more efficient. But how does that actually make the price of ETH go up? Well, the thesis connects these dots through a couple of really important mechanisms. A huge part of this argument leans on history. The source material points to other big upgrades like Pectra and claims it was followed by a 168% price rally in just over three months. The logic here is pretty simple. If Pectra did that and Fusaka is an even bigger and more impactful upgrade, then the price reaction could be even more explosive. They're basically saying these upgrades are like bull catnip. According to the source, it's a pretty straightforward four-step chain reaction. Step one, Fusaka makes fees super cheap. Step two, because it's cheap, everyone starts using the network way more. Step three, all that new activity means more ETH gets burned, basically removed from circulation forever. And finally, step four, less supply, same or more demand. Basic economics says the price has to go up. Okay, so we've laid out the case for why ETH itself might be poised for a big run. But now let's pivot and narrow our focus. We're going from this huge multi-billion dollar network down to the one specific company this whole thesis is built around, Bitmine Immersion Technologies, ticker BMNR. And this number right here, this is the whole reason we're talking about them. BMNR is at the absolute center of this thesis because of its treasury. The company reportedly holds 3.63 million Ether. To put that in perspective, at today's prices, that is an absolutely colossal amount of money, making them one of the biggest single holders on the entire planet. And just to really drive that point home, 3.63 million ETH isn't just a big number. It represents a staggering 3% of all the Ethereum currently in circulation. 3%. This basically turns the company's stock into a giant proxy for ETH's performance. If ETH's value goes up, the value of BNNR's assets just skyrockets. 
But hang on, the thesis says this isn't just about holding an asset and hoping it goes up. No, it points to a very active corporate strategy that it calls the staking flywheel, a mechanism that's designed to amplify the value of those holdings even more. So what on earth is this flywheel? Well, it's basically a self-reinforcing loop. The idea is the company stakes all its ETH to earn rewards. It then takes the cash generated from those rewards and uses it to buy back its own stock. Buying back stock reduces the number of shares out there, which in theory pushes the price of each remaining share up. It creates this positive feedback cycle. And here are the nuts and bolts of the plan. Starting in the first quarter of 2026, they plan to stake that entire 3.63 million ETH stash. That's projected to spin off somewhere between $300 and $400 million a year in yield. And what do they do with that cash? They're earmarking it for a massive $1 billion share buyback and bigger dividends for shareholders. All of it is designed to do one thing, squeeze the supply of stock and drive the price up. Now, the next piece of the puzzle moves away from the technicals and into what you might call social proof. It's all about following the whale money. The thesis argues that the really big, smart money players are already on board with this idea. And the headline number here is pretty eye-popping. The source claims that institutional investors, we're talking across 377 different firms, already hold $1.7 billion worth of BMNR stock. You know, that suggests a pretty high level of conviction from the folks who manage money for a living. And when you look at who these institutions are... Wow. It's a who's who of Wall Street. According to the data presented here, you've got Morgan Stanley, ARK Investment, BlackRock, Vanguard, JP Morgan, all of them reportedly holding positions worth over 100 million bucks. When you see a roster like that, the thesis argues, you have to start taking these projections very, very seriously. So let's recap. We've gone through the tech catalyst, the historical precedent, the direct link to a single company, their plan to amplify value, and the big money backing it all up. Now it's time for the grand finale, putting all the numbers together to see where this thesis actually lands. And this slide just leaves it all out plain and simple. The argument concludes that this whole chain of events will first push ETH to $7,000 by the end of 2025, and then all the way to $12,000 by the middle of 2026. And for our focus company, BMNR, that translates to a price target of $91 and then $146 which, from where it is now, would be that incredible 350% rally we talked about right at the start. So there you have it, a detailed step-by-step -step argument that connects a highly technical network upgrade to a very specific stock price. It's a chain of logic that relies on tech, history, and some clever financial engineering. The ultimate question, of course, is, are all these dots really connected? Is this a game-changing insight or just a case of speculative fever? It's a fascinating thesis to think about. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.